between tomorrow and my yesterdays. Hey, Jordan, Happy New Year. Happy New Year, Dan, and Happy New Year, friends and neighbors throughout the Facebook universe. Great to be back. How yeah. is everything in uh, wherever you are? Well, <laughs> Some I, cold tundra yeah, wherever you are. I feel like I'm trapped between yesterday and today, too, just like that song said. Exactly, exactly. Well, we're going to be delving into uh, great entertainment with a great entertainer who's a lot warmer than we are. We'll get to that in a minute. <laughs> So uh, let's talk about uh, who we're going to bring on today. And uh, we're a little jealous because this guy is, <laughs> this guy's down south where he's smart, uh, where all the smart people are. But let's talk a little bit about our guest. And we've got a great way to introduce him. Dan? Yeah, here we go. Gary M. Marino. Marino. Gary M. Marino. Gary M. Marino. Washington, D.C. How's it going over there, Gary? Oh, it's going great, Kelly. I'm, I'm here, I'm, I'm humbled, and I'm winded. <laughs> <laughs> I am now giving my therapist an extra $250 for the therapy she needs after I leave. <laughs> all right. D d we could play this all day long, but we want to no, meet the man. No, he's, he's so much fun, and he's a great, not only a great entertainer, but a wonderful human being. Gary Marino joins us now, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, Gary. Hey. <laughs> Where the hell are you? <laughs> Please, I have survivor's guilt as it is for everybody back home. I'm in, uh, I'm in Marco Island, Florida, actually. Oh, awesome. Beautiful. That but is I'm a great working. spot. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah, I can tell you're, you're sweating up a storm. No, actually, you are working and we'll talk about that. Uh, what we'd like to do first before we get rolling is the three things we don't know about the guest. It's a great icebreaker. I, did I say ice? Oh, why did I say that, Dan? Well, we are. All there is is ice. But let's uh, let's roll the music, shall we, and see what Gary can come up with. All right. Three things, Gary. The floor is yours. I had to ask my son this morning because I'm such an open book. I'm like, I, I, everybody knows everything about me. But um, <laughs> he did He did say, he goes, Dad, tell him that you're the home fry king. I make home fries to die for, to die okay. for. Home fries, number one. <laughs> yeah, I'll make them for you someday. Um, okay. I was almost, most people don't know this, I, I was actually cast or almost cast to play Jennifer Lawrence's boss in the movie Joy. And I'm not even an actor. This happened through happenstance and uh i had the role and then they eliminated the uh character uh, i was going to be in there with de niro bradley cooper and i was going to play jennifer lawrence's boss and I, I was supposed to fire her and i'm like if anybody she should be firing me <laughs> <laughs> that's a great that's um, a great little unknown note what's yeah. the third one gare the third one in this i thought about this for you uh jordan because you're a big uh shatner fan Yes. Uh, William Shatner, nobody knows this, saved my film single-handedly, The Million Calorie March, because I needed uh, rights to some Disney footage, and we were dead in the water. And out of the blue one day, I don't know the man, the phone rings in my office, and it's none other than Captain Kirk. And he really? said, hey, kid, email me everything about this film. I'm going to go into business affairs at Disney and get you the rights. And he got it done. That's awesome. What a, what what Shatner, an enterprising right? guy. That's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. Um, I, I mean, my connection to William Shatner is I've interviewed him a couple of times and uh, I'm a big fan, but you had an actual phone call from the man. I didn't, you didn't call out. He called you. That's awesome. That's fantastic. He, he heard from one of our investors who had invested, who had made a donation to his horse charity Yeah. that we needed help. And only my investor never told me that he reached out to Bill Shatner. So I'm in my That's office, you know, and I'm Gary Marino for crying out loud. And I get this call. Hey, it's Bill Shatner. And you've been <laughs> beaming ever since. Sorry, couldn't resist. Oh, um, <laughs> I don't have a sound <laughs> effect for that, but I need one. <laughs> you shouldn't. So we're going to chat with Gary. Dan, any thoughts before you do what yeah, you need so you to tell do? This is lunch with Jordan. And Gary, you had this wonderful idea. If, if I were down there with you, where would you take me to lunch? Oh, uh, most likely Mickle Bob's ribs. Really? Uh, who have won uh, awards that you didn't even know existed, Dan, for <laughs> sauces. <laughs> they, 
you walk in and there's like all these awards, three time winner of the, you know, best such and such sauce. You go, I didn't even yeah. know there were awards for this. No kidding. Um, okay, or, no, no. Snooks in on the water, seafood place, live music right on the dock. Nice. That's, oh, that yeah. sounds wonderful right now. Well, yeah. listen, speaking of that, I got to go chip icicles off my roof. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll be back by the end of the show, okay? Yeah, and power up the Learjet. Maybe we'll go down to see Gary and have a uh, late lunch. Gary, it's Listen, really, everybody's really... Everybody's yeah. welcome. Everybody's welcome. <laughs> I, uh, good old New England. We're down to three seasons, right, guys? Fall, winter, and road construction. You got That's it. it. There you go. There I'm you out. Go. Gary, it's good to have you here. See you soon, Great you. So, Gary, uh, there's a lot to talk about. For people who are unaware, you are one of the most active entertainers in the new england area you've now bringing the show on the road but let's start with the world gone crazy band and the concept behind that and you and i've done a lot on the radio to promote um and, and then even before that a little background on gary and entertainment if you would share with us well you know I, i'm actually really a behind the scenes guy you know i, I i've been a, a behind the scenes show producer for a lot of years uh, started in radio years ago lowest on the totem pole, highest on the guest list. Um, <laughs> but eventually launched my own company, um, you know, producing shows. I didn't jump in as an entertainer, Jordan, until about um, maybe eight or nine years ago, just to keep it interesting and to have some fun. But I, to this day, I still consider myself a uh, behind the scenes guy first and foremost. And uh, so but I'm, Marie I'm just guessing before you yeah. go further, I'm just guessing that when you were just a kid, you, you yeah. were doing shtick. Your name is Marino, so that makes you a funny guy because <laughs> you're Italian, like me being a yeah. Jew. Same thing. Yeah. Were you were you were there at times at home and celebrations, Christmas that you would do a little entertaining at the table, or am I mistaken? Very much so. Yeah. And everybody always encouraged me to become a comedian, but it wasn't in my heart back then. I you know, I loved working with comedy and loved producing comedy shows, but it really wasn't in here. And it wasn't until about eight or nine years ago that, uh, you know, I started to jump in. But as a kid, I, my family would probably tell you I was painfully entertaining. Yes. <laughs> painfully entertaining. Well, <laughs> you started to talk about the the business that you started. I didn't want to cut you off, but uh, tell us again the, the elevation oh. to where you are today. So Harmon Marino Live, we actually started in the early 90s as a multimedia company producing um, videos for, for uh, entertainers to get work with. And in a fairly short amount of time, we realized we have probably New England's largest library of performer videos. So that's how we sort of began getting into, you know, not only getting paid to produce videos, but then taking these entertainers and, and making further money with them on the live show end. So in the 90s, it was all corporate entertainment was really what I did. I, I didn't really do public shows like I do now. That's where the money was back then. God bless the 90s. So we did a lot of <laughs> you know, Fortune 500 corporate entertainment. And then uh, I left the business, as you know, Jordan, for about eight uh, years. I started a nonprofit uh, called Generation Excel and uh, had nothing to do with the entertainment biz. Although that's probably where I started to become talent. And then it all came together about 10 years ago. I returned to this business. And uh, nowadays what we do is we have a, a product line of about six shows that we produce. And we produce them for, you know, hotels, resorts, uh, entertainment venues, fundraisers, special events, things like that. Your shows are very entertaining. And dare I say, and this is only for people who are ancient, it, it reminds me not that I was there at the time, of a vaudevillian kind of approach where you have a review. You've got you've got music, you've got comedy, sometimes magicians juggling. You you add every element that people uh, used to see and expect to see at shows, Gary. Exactly. Well, you know, Boston's got great stand-up, and, you know, God bless them all. There's plenty of work for everybody. But as a businessman, I wanted to be able to offer more than just a regular stand-up. So, um, one of the shows we created that you talked about was World Gone Crazy, which is a comedy band, and it's rapid fire. You know, don't think uh, Weird Al. Think stand up with a rock and roll soundtrack, and it's yeah. parodies, it's stand up, it's fake commercials, it's impressions. And uh, we have just had, I'll tell you, these have been the better, you know, we've just had great years with World Gone Crazy. People love that mix, Jordan, you know, of, of music and stand up. You know, absolutely. Uh, you, you've played uh, and we're going to talk about where you are now. And we, we had a little fun with the fact that you're sunning yourself, but you're actually working. And I'm thrilled that 
you're down there doing what you're doing. But up here in the New England area, for people who uh, have caught you or haven't, uh, talk about some of the venues uh, pre-pandemic that, that you were playing and hopefully will play again. Well, you know, like Cape Cod Resort's been one of our uh, places for years. Cape Cod down in Hyannis, the Seacrest out in Falmouth, um, Chatham Bars Inn. Over in the, the vineyard, we have a regular room called the uh, Comedy Lounge Martha's Vineyard that uh, we run weekly shows at in the summer. I'm no yep. fool, Jordan. You know, I'm down here in the winter. I'm up there in the uh, summer. Um, Good for you. Yeah. And then, you know, you name it, ski resorts. And then, you know, right around Boston, we've done everything from Laugh Boston to, you know, uh, the, the Peabody Black Box Theater to, to Bass Rocks up in Gloucester to, you know, a lot of country club stuff and things like that. So, yeah. um, you know. That's great. Now, you're in Florida, as mentioned several times, yeah. envious that we are, but you're, you're working gigs. And how is the scene down there for entertainment uh, for you guys? Well, you know, it's certainly, um, I had started to build up a market down here pre-pandemic. That was always the plan, you know, was to build up a nice uh, um, market for our shows down here. And then, of course, the pandemic shut that down for a couple of years. We also do a lot in Southern California, Newport Beach, down to La Jolla, that area. Um, but uh, this season, well, you know what, it's, uh, I'm not going to tell you it's not you know, affected by Corona, but we can get shows off the ground here that we probably couldn't have gotten at home, you know, and uh, it's spaced, you know, like everything else, sure. but it's a great market down here. Um, you know, people probably don't realize there's more wealth situated down here in Naples, Marco Island in this area than there is in all of Manhattan. Mm -hmm. And they're all looking for things to do. So. Well, you're giving them uh, lots of great entertainment as they settle down and where it should be uh, warm and delightful. Um, let's talk a little bit about uh, what we focused on in the video briefly, and that was your appearance on uh, the Regis and Kathy Lee show, or the Reg <laughs> was it Regis and Kelly or Kathy Lee? At the Kelly, time? Yeah. Kelly Ripa, Kelly. Yeah. And the reason that that happened was you were getting national attention for something that we covered, I covered with you, called the Million Calorie March. Tell, tell us about that and how it all evolved. Well, this happened at the time when, I, as I said, I had left the entertainment biz and was running a nonprofit called Generation XL back in Boston. And when we launched it, you know, we were looking for ways to get it funded. And everybody said, oh, why don't you do, you know, a, a walk, a 5K? Everybody was doing 5Ks and golf tournaments and comedy nights. And I said, no, I don't want to be, in, you know, kind of locked in with an ocean of, of, you know, charity walks. So I came up with this crazy idea. Let's do something. Um, let's have the least likely guy ever, <laughs> Jordan. <laughs> <Do a, laughs> when you think about it, you know, take a plane to Florida and walk back. And um, so it was called the Million Calorie March. But I wasn't alone. It wasn't a. Um, it was not a. Um, <laughs> a uh, you know, Forrest Gump sort of thing. I had a road crew. I had sponsors. I had hotel sponsors, and we we took pledges every mile back up to Boston and uh, raised $150,000. And, and that's how the, the foundation initially got seeded. You know? And and that you, you were mentioning the film, the documentary yeah. film, and the help yeah. that William Shatner, of all people, gave you. But it was an inspiring thing. Did you think it would take off and get the national interest that it did when you first planned it out? I, you know, I, I wasn't sure. I had hoped it would, certainly. But I also, you know, I wasn't sure Joe and I could physically do it. I had lost mm -hmm. a lot of weight at that point. But I wasn't sure I could physically do it. So my thinking was, we'll start off quiet, okay? We'll kick it off out of Jacksonville, Florida. And if for some reason I get injured or whatever, I can't do it, we can quietly go off the road. And um, that didn't pan out because the Regis and Kelly people, I was actually on a bunch of times, they called Gelman, remember Gelman? The Gelman. Producer was, yeah. He called and said, hey, we want to kick off your walk on our show. <laughs> in front of 10 million people. And I said, well, that's the end of thinking we could start small and build it. But I had always hoped by the time we got to New York City that we would get national media attention. And uh, uh, New York was was amazing. Helicopters in the air, live run into Regis and Kelly. Uh, it was just a great time up there. Fox News covered us, all, all the national media, People Magazine, uh, USA Today. So I would, I guess the quick answer to your question is it took off bigger than I ever thought it would. And, and what I think people back in Boston don't realize, see, they remember the walk, 
what they don't what they didn't see was the five six seven years after where 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 nationally it took like you know blue cross of north carolina called us after that and said we want to back a walk here in the state you know 600 miles across the state media appearances with you know michael jordan and stuff like that i, I did similar campaigns to the main calorie march in north carolina pennsylvania other states and um also produced the movie and it was a rocket ride into a whole nother strata for me nobody has eaten their way into you know the opportunities i have jordan <laughs> <laughs> that brings up that well i'm going to to wax a little poetic in terms of entertainment lore yeah. um uh you're you're a you're a, a zoftic fellow let's put it that way you know you are <laughs> And part of that is just being a Marino, right? Come on, it's right, mm -hmm. come on. But um, down through the ages, there have been uh, comics who have uh, been larger and then they're larger than life. And obviously, Jackie Gleason comes to mind, Chris Farley. Yeah. And you can go right down the line from the early days of the silent films to today. And uh, I think it's an exclusive club, but it's a very good club. I mean, I, I remember watching guys like Jackie Leonard, I don't mean, you probably don't remember him, but maybe you do guys like that. And they were just funny and took, didn't take themselves too seriously. Any of those right. guys that I'm mentioning uh, inspirations for you? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, years ago, uh, when I was doing some speaking for um, Blue Cross, a guy came up to me after and he said he, he was glowing and he says, you know, who you remind me of. And I said, who's that? And he said, Jackie Gleason. And I said, oh, <laughs> He was a little before my time. And he goes, you don't know, you never watched The Honeymooners? And I said, no, not really. And so the guy was nice enough. He sent me The Honeymooners Millennial Collection uh, in the mail. And I've since then, I spent a lot of time watching him. Yeah, he's been inspirational. Um, you know, anybody who, who, you know, it's one of the few areas, I think, where we're having a weight problem works for you. You know, it works for you on stage. So, well, um, it, it's also um, it, it's not it's because we can all well, present company excluded. Yeah. I have a weight problem. I can't gain weight. But most <laughs> people in America can identify with somebody who's, you know, had some some weight issues or still or in your case is also quite proud and happy and very content with your life. I'm just speculating yeah. here because I know you mm -hmm. superficially, but I think there's a connection you make with people. And and, and yeah. that brings us to the shows. Talk a little bit about the humor and what you're making fun of these days. What's what's on target for? Well, for you know, it writes itself, right? The world has gone crazy. So I definitely talk about, you know, I talk about people trying to get on the planes with emotional support animals. Um, I talk about, um, you know, every crazy issue in the news. I, I talk about coronavirus, you know? Um, I talk about how I miss the 80s and the 90s, you know, when reach out and touch me was a phone jingle and not a me too moment. And, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I talk about the old days and how crazy things have gotten. Um, and, you know, I certainly do a certain amount of, uh, of weight uh, material. And uh, I also, uh, you know, as a writer, I always tune into where I am in, in, in the local culture and try to write stuff for them. So. I'm kind of in the old country down here, so I'll make fun of, of that, you know, how it's older crowds and, um, you know, how everybody drives and all that kind of stuff. Well, well, one of the, one of the things that I love about you and people like you and comedians who are self-deprecating first, and then it's easier to relate to the audience and get them to laugh. Cause I, I know I've done a little bit of amateur stand up whenever I'm called to MC something and it's always better to start out by making fun of yourself a little bit loosens up yeah. the audience, doesn't it, Gare? Yeah, yeah, I've seen you. You're a funny guy uh, anyway. So um, that's sort of how I think I got into stand-up, Jordan. It wasn't from working with stand-ups. It was Blue Cross hired me between the years 2004 and, say, 10 for 200 keynote speeches around the country. And this was talking about Million Calorie March. So I was all around the country during those years, and I knew that you had to open up your speeches with some humor. So I wrote about 15 minutes of basically, you know, weight, weight loss, you know, stand, weight loss, weight gain stand up. That's when I realized I could do it. But it wasn't from working with, with, with you know, all the comics back home. It was just as a speaker, it sort of evolved from there. 
That's really interesting. I did not know about the the number of speaking engagements that you had, but it, it this thing was I remember, I mean, it was a a cultural uh, iconic sort of moment that New Englanders could identify with because we knew you and we were rooting for you. Along the 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 march, along the walk, did you yep. have times when you thought I can't do this anymore? It's 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 getting old. I'm in North Carolina and it's 110. What was it like? Did it, moments like that? If you see the film, which we're hopefully going to be releasing uh, uh, for the first time on streaming stuff, because it was a the film was out in 2008. Um, yeah. If you see the film, the first two weeks were brutal physically. OK, and then what happens is and you'll see what happened. There were definitely times where I didn't know that we were going to be able to continue. And Dave McGilvey, the great Dave McGilvey, was on the phone advising us, oh, you know, great. what to do. But um Here's what happens with the human body. After I was walking 15 to 20 miles a day, but you got to remember that was a campaign. It was a fundraiser. So I was doing 21 morning radio shows a week. I was doing um, all the local news. I was doing lots of print interviews. And uh, once my body got it got in shape and used to, okay, this is how life's going to be. This is me for 20 miles a day, you know? Um, it wasn't the physical part of it, uh, Jordan. It was the business part. It was the walking 15, 20 miles a day and stops at radio stations, TV stations. And uh, it was a grueling, grueling um, schedule. Sheridan was our hotel sponsor, and I became a spokesman for their new low-carb menu. So I had to do events for them. And um, so, so that's really what happened. It, physically, I was okay. I was running by the end of the walk. I was actually by, we yeah. got, by the time we got to Philadelphia and, and up to Massachusetts, I was running probably five to 10 of it. Yeah. Well, that, that's a good tie into, we have a time for a few more things, a good tie into what you do now as a, not only host and yeah. player in the band, but also a producer. People think producer, yeah. they think clipboard and a coffee cup. You're on in 10 minutes, Mr. Hope. But producers have to think about everything when you're doing a show, the kind of shows you do. Yeah, it's a double vision thing that um, it, people, it, um, it, it is really, really tough because um, by the time, it, it, you know, if you look at my business card, it says Gary Marino, PPW, producer, performer, whatever. <laughs> and 80% <laughs> of what I do, Jordan, is the whatevering. It, yeah. It's it's yeah. you know we, we we're marketing advertising we're getting hotel rooms we're doing load in sound checks, and I always say to the like the guys in the band I say uh, I envy you because I would love nothing more than to just be able to show up and my job is to entertain. Usually by the time I step on stage I'm toast. You know what I mean? And like the performing is much like the walking. It's the secondary thing. <laughs> right. It's automatic. You you just and there's yeah. nothing great about getting on stage and getting that adrenaline rush anyway that sort of boosts oh, yeah. your 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 energy level and gets you through it but uh yeah. the shows have been very well received up here and very well received down in florida what is the sponsor again of the series oh. and obviously people can go to your website that they're seeing uh throughout here and we'll, well say very lucky we've been doing shows uh, at the cliff house in maine up in cape Natick, which is a, a beautiful resort up in the um you know just uh, south of uh, Ogunquit. And um, so they actually came on as the um, uh, sponsor of my Florida tour. Uh, so we're promoting them as a summer destination down here in the winter in Florida, because a lot of snowbirds down here, they head up there and they're always looking for a great place to stay. So I'm very lucky that uh, they came on board and sponsored the shows. And we're here in Marco Island. We're in Naples. We're in Bonita Springs, um, Cape Coral, which is north of here. And uh, we're even taking a trip up to like the Panhandle for a show. I'm with um, Marty Nadler. The great Marty Nadler is doing shows with us. The screenwriter and, and comic, um, you know, who did Happy Days, LeBron and Shirley, The Odd Couple. Is his son cool. with him? Too? His son with him as well? We missed, Ch we wish Charlie could be here. Charlie's making a uh, appearance via video. <laughs> oh, good. Okay. And uh, uh, to, These great guys, father and son team. Hilarious. Just hilarious. Wonderful guys. guys. Great guys off stage, great guys on stage, and um, and then to fill in for Charlie, um, we 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 told we told him we said we 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 casted a new son for Mark, <laughs> and that's um Mark Riccadonna, who who's a wonderful comic who uh, has written for SNL and uh, is all over satellite radio, one of the nicest guys in the business. So the three of us are in Marco, 
And then we've got some music shows that we're doing comedy and music up in Bonita Springs. And it's myself opening and hosting. And then um, we've got um, a young Sinatra. We got a guy coming out doing Sinatra. And so it's the combo, you know, of music and comedy. And we're giving away, uh, if you buy tickets, you get entered into a raffle. You can win a free two-night stay at the Cliff House. Hey, look at that. Well, hey. Gary, Dan is back and uh, got hey, the dude. icicles off the roof. Hi, Dan. Yeah, I came back in a little bit early uh, because the feed is really blowing up. And uh, I also wanted to just point out that, you know, I went and bought this CD on Apple and it was awesome because I got this awesome album, but I also did something fantastic. The money went to where, Gary? It went to uh, actually the Jimmy Fund in uh, the work they do at the Dana Faber and Press uh, Oncology. Linda Turcott up in uh, Beverly, uh, one of our World Gone Crazy super fans. She has a running, you know, she has a walk team for the Jimmy Fund. So we sponsored the, awesome. her I'm, team and, and all the money goes to that. Yeah, thank you. It's hilarious. I listened. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, it's fantastic. And the musicianship is really, really awesome as well. Thanks. Um, oh. But listen to this, you guys. Um, Ga- so you guys were just talking about Gary. Uh, here's his comment. He's he he's with us. He's on the oh, Charlie. Live stream. Charlie Madden. Char- uh, Charlie, yeah, Charlie. Hey. And Charlie says Gary. So he's there. All right. Um, also, Mike Held had this comment. Uh, Sarnad in the Gazette for Gary Marino Marty Nadler show on January twenty second. Are there any tickets available? Thank you, Let's Mike, for boss. that comment. Are there tickets available? Still, some tickets available. You can you can get them on Eventbrite at Happier Days Comedy Show, or uh, there's a great store on Marco Island called Keep in Touch, and uh, they sell the hot copy tickets there. Yeah, excellent. Yeah. Actually, excellent. Charlie yeah. was nice enough to put a link in the comments too for everybody. So if you didn't see that, everybody, and you need tickets, Charlie, thank you for doing that. Um, Thanks, Charlie. Howard Rankin is with us and he wants to know where can i see the million calorie march oh gary you said it's it's soon to be streaming is that right gary yeah because when when it first was released um you know came out in all the uh um we did film festivals across the country and then we had a bunch of dvd distributors uh, pick it up and then i kind of moved on you know with with life and i didn't do anything with the film but we are working on uh you know all of the streaming services uh, hopefully a little bit later in the 2022 uh, Amazon and, and, you know, places like that. Um, you, I mean, you can order the hot coffee actually direct from us. Okay. Just go to the million calorie match on Facebook and, um, you million can calorie march on Facebook. Yeah. thanks to Howard. And, and thanks to so many who, uh, checked in and many more will check in after the fact when Correct. this remains up there for people to see and enjoy. You are not only a phenomenal entertainer, but you're, uh, as super guy, we've known each other for many, many years. And, uh, it, it, this is a, Yiddish term. You're a you're a mensch. Actually, you're a mencherino, which is an Italian mensch. Uh, well, you guys, Gary. you guys are both paisans, and uh, you know, Jordan. By the way, I, I would be remiss if I didn't mention you have been amazingly supportive to the, every to the arts community in Boston, and, and and you know, it comes from your heart. You don't want anything for it, and you're just a special guy. And you know, I hope you know how many people are grateful. You know, for you I, doing the show with Dan, and just for. All the, the humble, you know, humble, 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 uh, yeah. it's, it's my, it's my greatest joy is working with and for people like Gary and so many others from the classical musicians to the comics, because we need to keep the arts alive. Gary, thank you so much. God bless. Have a wonderful guys. new year, my friend. Hey, thanks for having me. And, and listen, you're both welcome. We have a guest room here. I'm coming down, <laughs> Gary. I went to the wrong Island. I went to Polo instead of Marco and I <laughs> threw my whole vacation up. Well, uh, we're going to get out of here, Dan, and we've got some great guests coming up. Uh, we'll sort of plug them on the Facebook page, Jordan Rich Show on Facebook. And uh, anything to close out before we? No, I just, um, I'm going to say the world is a great place uh, with good people doing awesome things. Couldn't have said it any better myself. Until next time, dear friends, this is Jordan, as always, saying be well so you can do good. And happy new year. Peace, yeah. everybody. Bye, Gary. Thanks, guys. You're the best. Appreciate it.